life, sex, goals, and oh, hell knows, this is Midlife Craving. So let me ask you a question. Who goes to the Bahamas, turns 40, tests positive for COVID, gets put on a 10-day no-fly list, and then fucks a local on their last day? This guy, that's the fuck who. <laughs> it has been a wild six weeks, man. Like, I I don't even know where to begin. I guess first, welcome back to the shit show that is my life. I got to be honest, I'm feeling a little rusty right now. It's been so long since I've recorded, but I have truly missed this. And so much shit has happened. So much shit has changed with me. My God, I swear, I, I really don't even know how I'm going to sum all of this up, but I'm going to try. I think it would be best if I just like break it all down. You know, normally I have my five minute orgasm and today we're going to have my however long this takes to record orgasm. Speaking of orgasms, God, I am severely deprived right now. I've had my daughter full time for weeks and it's hard to get away. Hiding in the closet next to the stuffed animals and that famous unicorn. It's getting kind of (laughs) old. All right, so let's get this on. Let's get this who knows how long orgasm started. I guess I'll get started by taking us back five weeks when I had like a little breakthrough, if you will. You know, I started this show with the premise of feeling a midlife crisis, craving more and realizing that like no one talks about how wild this phase of life is. I said, you know, I accomplished all the things in my 20s, all the things in my 30s. And it's like, now what? Well, five weeks ago, when I was excitedly waiting for Baywatch to come over, it hit me. You know, this, this right now is what, you know, like I'm 40, I'm free, and I'm fucking thriving. The last two years of my life have been complete chaos, and I am now in a healthy relationship with myself, not anyone else. I do what the fuck I want, how the fuck I want when the fuck I want, with whoever the fuck I want. And holy shit, like, that is so fucking liberating. I mean, me, right now, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm free. And that feeling alone is pretty fucking amazing. You know, also, for the first time, speaking of alone, for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm perfectly fine and okay being alone. When I got divorced in 2017, I definitely don't feel like I was as confident and secure as I am now. Um, I was looking for, you know, my next thing and, you know, jump right back into a relationship. And right now, like I'm at peace with where I'm at in life and I'm perfectly fine. I'm alone, but I'm not lonely. All right. So let me update you on Baywatch. Mm, That little hottie boom body. God. So as I was saying, I was all excited and my little epiphany happened as he was coming over. Um, he comes over, he was coming over and of course, like I was so excited to see him and he walks in the door and didn't even talk to me. I mean, he knows what I like. He slammed me up against my closet doors right when you walk in and we made out passionately. Like, let me just tell you, like that shit is so fucking hot. So we head upstairs and we get it on. And I think like what I love most about Baywatch is his stamina. It doesn't hurt that he is so easy on the eyes either, but like he just has like incredible stamina and so much energy. And I fucking love that. Of course, the first things he does is go down on me and God bless him for that. And by the way, like a word to all my men out there doing that and lots of foreplay, it just makes for the entire experience to be that much more enjoyable. Like it's a shame how many men just go straight to penetration now for quickies and, you know, gotta have it fucks. Like I get it. But majority of the time, like lots of foreplay, like that should be a thing. So he's going down on me and he's really taking his time and I appreciate that. And it's just like so amazing when you have a giver in the bedroom, especially because he always makes sure I finish first. And then afterwards, like my thing, I like to get fucked after I come. And so he fucked me really good in like the sideways position. So it's like I'm on my side and like my leg is my right leg. Like I'm on my left side. My right leg is like lifted up a little bit and he straddles my bottom leg on the bed. And then he just like fucking destroys me. Like, I don't even, I don't know why, but I am really loving that position. Oh God. He fucked me so hard, so good. And then it was like, Oh, Hey, like nice to fucking see you. You know, (laughs) we got to get this and we got to get things, you know, priorities. We got priorities here. So afterwards I took him to a great place for beers and dinner. 
And they have all these old school arcade games. And we just have like a really nice time together. You know, what I like about him is there's zero pressure. We get along really well. And it's just nice and easy. You know, I thought to myself, like, wow, life is fucking amazing for me right now. Like, I'm a lucky gal. And I totally feel that way. It was funny because I was telling Zach about how much fun I had with him. And he was like, these millennials don't sleep on them, sleep with them. I was like, indeed, I fucking will. (laughs) So the next day I hopped on a train to New York City and like last minute Carissa joined me, which was super fun. I haven't been in New York City since 2015, which is insane to me. And it was so nice to be back there again. Also, I just want to say like it felt like completely normal New York there. And that was really nice. I went to visit my cousin who has a fabulous penthouse on the Upper East Side. And let me just tell you, like, we fucking let it rip. I did not, I did not waste a New York minute. I fell instantly in love with all of my cousin's friends. Like, they are amazing. One of them, I am really hoping to get on the show. He told me some wild stories and he has the perfect, (laughs) the perfect content for this show, let me tell you. So I'm working on that. Uh, So we get there and we go to brunch and they were talking about the show they were going to in Brooklyn that night. And I looked at Carissa no less than like 10 times. And I was like, we are not going to that concert tonight. Like we're not going. And little did I know how easily I fall for peer pressure. We were walking back and I was a little buzzed up and Carissa's like, we're going to that show. And I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. So the party continued on my cousin's terrace with honestly one of the best views I've seen uh, it's just, it was so fucking nice just to be hanging out up there. And at one point, a neighbor that my cousin knows from across the street in the other building was yelling at us. So we were all yelling back and forth. And then my cousin's roommate like stands up and just like whips his cock out and flashes them. And I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> it was so fucking funny. And the guy's yelling across the street and he, they're like, they want, he wants to see your tits. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. When in Rome. So I like flash my tits across the street. There's like a thousand fucking windows everywhere. You know, like times like that, you just have to go for it. You know, life is short. Show your tits. <laughs> so next thing I know, I'm sitting there. I'm buying tickets to Mayan Warrior. It's in Brooklyn. And we're fucking on our way. It like happened so fast. Oh, we did play, play uh, beer pong between that. And it was so fucking fun. I swear, like hanging out with my cousin again. It's been a while since I've seen him. It was fucking amazing. And we had such a great time. All right. So we're on our way. And then we first stopped in Chelsea to like this, another fabulous apartment for drinks. And then we headed over the East river to the Brooklyn. So it was this place called the Brooklyn Mirage. And I don't know if you guys have ever been there or you can Google it. Like this place is fucking insane. There's like all these levels where you can like look down on the main stage The place is honestly like indescribable. I mean, it was wild. And I quickly realized when I got there, I was like, oh shit, like my first rave. (laughs) And me and Carissa, we had a really great time. I didn't know any of the songs, but I had plenty of alcohol in me. And so it was all good. I had a fucking blast. We headed back to New York City and got dinner at 2 a.m. I passed out on the couch and then hit the train back to Baltimore by 10 a.m. I mean, it was a fucking whirlwind, but I cannot wait to fucking go back. You know, I was riding high. I was like, wow, I just had a bomb ass weekend from fucking Baywatch and then partying with my cousin, and all of his amazing friends like life is damn good for me. And naturally, shit was just about to hit the fan and my life started getting real interesting. So Thursday, August 12th, I departed for the Bahamas with my baby girl. I was so excited to spoil her on this trip. You know, she's really patient with me about how much I work. A lot of people forget that I have a full-time job as well. So I have my full-time job, my show, I'm at the gym all the time. I'm trying to make time for my friends. And she is so fucking patient with me and such a good girl. And I thought I'm going to take her to Atlantis and just spoil her because it's a really great place for kids. And plus it's in the Caribbean and let's just do it. So I splurged on this trip and was very excited for it. Uh, so we got there on Thursday. So on Friday, like, I don't know, like I was just coming down with something. I had sinus pressure and a massive headache. Like I was like, wow, like my head fucking hurts. So I took some ibuprofen and it took it away. So I was like, cool, I'm good. And we played all fucking day, you know, water slides, the rapid river, beaching it up. And then on my birthday, we had the 
best day. You know, the beach, the sun. I went to an amazing steakhouse, which my favorite meal is steak, potatoes, and a veg. And of course, Bud Light. I mean, I was fucking happy. It was great. I turned 40. I had an amazing birthday. And I had so much love on my birthday. And multiple people had said to me, you know, Adrian, things change the day you turn 40. And I was like, okay, I'm ready for it, baby. (laughs) So the next day I got my COVID test and we set out like we were hitting the parks, you know, I was climbing stairs, jumping in tubes, you know, riding slides. At no point did I ever in a million fucking years think that I would test positive. Like I didn't even fucking think about it. Hours later, I'll I'll never forget this. I was like sitting on the beach drinking a mango margarita. And I thought, hmm, maybe I should check my email and make sure, you know, my test, see if my test came back, make sure we're all set to leave tomorrow. And I'm just sitting there and I open the email and the biggest word positive was glaring across the screen at me. I was like, oh my fucking, like, honestly, I'm starting to sweat thinking about that moment right now. Um, it was, it was a bit of an out of body experience. Uh, I sat there stunned and I was like, oh fucking fuck. Um, I'm not, okay. So I'm not, I'm not going to go into like lengthy details about what happened after that. I mean, shit, it's just, it's just not worth it here. In fact, I will probably never speak of the shit I went through down there to anyone ever. But let me just tell you the incredible stress of being stuck and worried about, you know, taking care of myself and my daughter. And I mean, it was fucking wild. And the craziest part was I got put on a 10 day no fly list. So it was like, I'm not fucking going anywhere for 10 days. That's a lot to take in. So God, you know, I got to be honest. Um, it's really hard. It's, it's I, I just, I don't even know where it, it's so many things happen. Oh my God. But all right. So God, I don't even know where to get started. All right. So, so much stuff happened and there was so much funny shit that happens that I just, it's too funny not to share, but I got to be honest. It's really hard to pick and choose the things I want to share about this here. Number one, I fucking hate politics. And we all know this virus has been completely politicized in many ways. And yeah, I have no intention of discussing any of that shit. And number two, so much and ins- so much insane shit happened to me. I don't I don't ever want to talk about it again. Um, so if you're feeling confused or there's gaps in my stories here, uh sorry. I I mean, I I, I think I'm gonna try to string it along as best I can, but um Yeah, let's just dive right in. So when I found out I was stuck and I was in my room, like I couldn't leave my room. Um, Of course, I used my personality to meet as many people as I could online for help. Um, The deal was lodging was covered by insurance, which I later found out. It's basically like a scam. So I have to eat that. But food is not covered. My only option was room service. So I was able to find others that were stuck there and other guests that were leaving and they had like extra beers or food or whatever, and they could drop it off at my door. Um, so it was wild. Like these, these first three days were wild. But then on the Wednesday, after hacking it alone, I found and I met this amazing woman named Jill. So she was stuck there with others that were testing positive, but she was negative. So she was able to like run around for all of us. She is honestly the sole reason why I stayed sane down there. Um, I was able to get a lot of help from other guests at Atlantis, and a lot of them were my saving grace. And I just want to say really quick, like, let me tell you, my faith in humanity has been restored, and I will pay it forward forever. And again, I don't want to go into specifics here. And listen, like, I absolutely made the most of it, but it was rough. Like I was in a hotel room for nine days um, alone with my baby girl. And so it was a lot. Um, If you follow me on Instagram or on TikTok, so it's at Midlife Craving or on TikTok, it's at Midlife Craving Podcast. You already know that and you see a lot of videos for what I've gone through. But being stuck there was like being stuck on like one of those old old school, like wooden roller coasters. And the goddamn Carney just would not let me off. Like there were so many high highs and so many low lows. Um, I want to share with you some hysterical text exchanges between myself and Jill, because it is too fucking funny not to. And at the time, like looking back at the time, it's not funny. Like my texts and like my dire situation, but looking back, I'm like, holy shit, like this, this is comedic gold. So at one point, Atlantis was like, you're going to have to stay another 10 days. And 
when I tell you, like I had already been there at that point, it was there 12 days. And I was like, no fucking way. Like I'm not staying here almost a fucking month. Like you're insane. And so I started blowing up Jill's phone. I'm like, Jill, I can't do this. I am out of money. I have to leave Thursday. I need to get out. Like seriously, like my text messages are so incredibly alarming. Like if it's all caps, it's a lot. And so Jill's response is simply, okay, I'm going to bring you a volume. <laughs> My next text to her is, Jill, I cannot afford another $375 test. Yes, by the way, that's how much Atlantis charges. And she responds, I swear to God, this is verbatim. Just put on hats and masks and leave the resort. Say nothing to no one. And I'm like, bitch, I can't just like walk out of here. And I'm like, I'm like, Jill, I have to get another test. This is insane. And she responds back. Okay, I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to come over with some beers, some shots, and a Mexican volume. And she sends me a picture of this, like, pint of Jack Daniels. And then she texts me. She says, I'm coming, and we're going to see what we can figure out. (laughs) And she did. She showed up with beers, Jack Daniels, a fucking volume. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, what the fuck is going on? But she was, like, the calm at that time. Like, she really did help me, like stay stable and be like, Adrian, it's going to be okay. Like, I can't, I can't tell you what this woman means to me. So much shit went down. Um, but the next day I finally tested negative. It was like, I was reborn. Like I was fucking free. Okay. Like I bolted, I ran to the ocean. I had three beers in my hand, like Jill's running behind me. And I was just chugging them as fast as I could. Like it was fucking glorious. So what's funny is Jill didn't even she didn't even have a swimsuit on. She had on like this romper and she's like, it's fine. I'll just get in. So me, and, me and her are like in the ocean. I'm pummeling beers. I'm looking around. Like people are looking at me like, what the fuck is going on with this girl? And I'm like, bitch, like I've been here fucking two weeks. Like I'm free. Like I'm fucking free, free at last. Like my God. And, um, we're sitting there talking and, you know, she was like, Adrian, we're going to miss this. She was like, you know, let's just take this all in. And it's funny because I do, I do miss that beach. I miss that beautiful crystal clear water. And I miss that view. I do. So, but we were laughing about it. And then all of a sudden she's like, you know, I think you should just double down. Like you should travel again all of next month. And I'm like, oh my God. like this is way too soon. Like hashtag too soon. Like I'm not leaving the country. Like my passport is going to collect dust until you no longer have to test for COVID because you just don't fucking know. Like it can happen to anyone, you know? So Jill kept me so grounded. Like I kept telling her, I was like, you are the yin to my yang. You are the calm to my storm. And she's my fucking family now. Okay. So in the midst of all of this, like during the first few days of my quarantine, I hustled my ass off online to meet people and try to get help. Just for a reference here. So with room service, a BLT is $23. Then everything, and I mean everything at that resort, is a 31% tax. Plus, then it's the $4 delivery fee for their room service. So you're looking at, I mean, lunch and dinner, you're looking at like $250 a day. Like, it's a lot. You know, it reminded me when I was in college, I had a nickname, and that was Monty Hall from Let's Make a Deal. I was always trying to beg, borrow, and steal my way (laughs) into places or trying to get the best grade or figuring out how I could get help. And, you know, I was always in the teacher's hours and all that stuff. Um, So I am like an amazing hustler. And it really paid off for me down there. At one point I was looking to get on a boat to go to Florida. So it's only two and a half hours to go to Florida. Um, I had one guy that was on a super yacht and he was like, I'll take you, but I couldn't, if it was just me, listen, Adrian's going, but I had my girl and I was like, I can't put my fucking eight year old on a boat where I don't know anyone into international waters. Like it just didn't fucking feel right. So I was like, I can't, but on my quest to meet Every single fucking person in the Bahamas, this local charter captain saw my post on Instagram. We started talking mostly about like all the crazy that I was going through, but I quickly realized, you know, he was super sweet. And then like a little flirting was going on. He actually lives in Exuma and he was like, Hey, I'm going to be in Nassau next week. Like, are you still going to be there? I'm like, looking at my watch. I'm like, yep. Still going to fucking be here. Cause I got 10 fucking days on the no fly list. You know, it's funny. I made this TikTok because it was like the things people say to me while I'm stuck in the Bahamas with COVID. So everyone would be like, stay positive, Adrian. And I'm like, too bad I didn't think about that already. 
And then they were like, you know, there's more to outfits than just bikini tops. And I'm like, well, I only packed for four days and I was here for 14. Like I just lived in a fucking bathing suit. And what's funny is coming home, that's all I've been wearing around the house. Like I went to Chick-fil-A the other day and I'm like pulling up in a bathing suit. I just, I don't know. I'm just comfortable in that now. Uh, people were always like, you know, enjoy that view. And every night I was like, another glorious sunset makes me sick, <laughs> you know? And then people were like, you're so funny. Like, how do you keep things so light? And I'm like, well, I'll be here all week. No, really? Like, I'll be here all fucking week. <laughs> like, fuck me. God. So, you know, like, oh. so finally my last day rolls around and I had tested negative. And honestly, I was going ape shit. Like for 48 hours, I went ape shit. Like Jill and I went to the Four Seasons. I was never without a beer in my hand. And the local messaged me and was like, hey, I'm here. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, so I had to go get the kids dinner. And I was like, fuck it, meet me downstairs. So <laughs> the reason how I knew it was him is he was walking with a six pack of Bud Light. And I was like, oh, that's my guy. So we went and got food and drank beers along the way. And it was really nice. Like, it was just easy, like good conversation. And it was just nice to hang out with somebody that was really cool. Uh, So we come back to the hotel and we're in the elevator and we just like start making out. And I'm like, oh, my God. And like, I'm thinking to myself, this fucking hotel, they're probably like, this bitch has been here for 14 days. She has she tested positive for COVID. I'm negative now. And now she's like making out with some guy in the elevator. Like, what the fuck? At one point, the doors opened up and I'm sure this family was standing there and I could I'm sure they could tell that we were all disheveled and like, (sighs) you know, and we were like, do you guys want to get in? They're like, no. (laughs) So I'm like, oh, my God. So I just thought to myself, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go to his room really quick and fuck him. So I text Jill and I'm like, hey, I'm going to go fuck this local really quick. (laughs) She responds and says verbatim, got it. Let me know when you're on your way back. <laughs> it's like all this bitch says back to me. So fucking funny. So I said to her, I was like, girl, you just get me. And she said, Adrian, I knew you were crazy from the beginning. Like I, the moment I met you, I knew what kind of person you were. And I was like, I don't understand how you pinned me in the like seriously in like the state of my affairs. Like I was in a dire situation and she was just like, no, I know who you are. <laughs> All right, so we head back to his room. We're making out. He yanks off my pants and immediately goes down on me. And uh, it was just like, okay, Adrian, like, relax. Like, I had been so stressed out and under so much pressure. Like, it was really fucking nice. And he was really good at eating pussy. Like, I was like, God damn. He also, which is funny, a lot of people asked me about this when we were on, I was talking about on Instagram. And he, like, ate my ass. And I was like, like that's not normally my thing like if that's your thing that's fine um it's not normally mine but I'm not gonna say no but so that was that was nice that was a little bonus and then I look down and he has this like enormous huge fucking cock by far the biggest one I've ever seen and I'm thinking to myself he's like putting the condom on and I'm thinking to myself well, where's that gonna go um I don't think he ever put it all the way in he nailed the shit out of me he like rolls me over fucks me hard. I mean, it was a hot, passionate quickie for sure. And afterwards I was like fucking bleeding everywhere. I'm like, Oh my God, holy shit. And he was just like, not phased at all. Like I was just like, this is the biggest dick I've ever had. You just fucking destroyed me. And you could tell like that shit probably happens to him all the time. But I will say this for as big as his dick is like his heart is even bigger. And I really enjoyed my time with him. He's a really good guy. You know, I swear to God, like my last 48 hours on that fucking island, I was category four. No, five. Like, is there a five? Hurricane Adrian. Like, it was like, watch the fuck out. It is a warning, not a watch. Like, shit is coming through. Or wait, is it watch, not a warning? Fuck, I can never remember that. Anyway, so (laughs) the next day we departed and I texted Jill and I'm like, well, I tell you, I left the Bahamas with a bang, literally. And (laughs) she wrote back and she said, you sure did. She said, well, you know, you are suffering from PTCD, post-traumatic COVID disorder. Might as well go on a world tour. (laughs) And I'm like, oh my God. Like the fact that she was just like, you know, you might as well just like let it rip, you know, double down, travel some more. I mean, it's fucking hysterical. I will tell you this too. Like (laughs) I got through customs. I sat there. I got there like six hours early. I don't remember. I fucking bolted. It was like I was fleeing the country. Um, I sat on that airplane in silence. I did not talk. 
I didn't watch videos. I didn't listen to music. I just sat there in silence, complete silence the entire time. Like I was just like, what has happened these last two weeks? When I landed, I laid on my yard, cried my ass off and kissed the ground. Like I was like, oh my God, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. It was fucking insane. And I just want to say, um, Jill and her family, they have become my family and luckily live close by in Virginia. So I'm going to go visit with them in November. And I think I'm going to record with her. Like she's fucking amazing. So that's exciting. And I can't imagine like recounting like all of this that happened. Like I swear to God, like even as I'm sitting here, I'm like, is this a fucking movie? Like, holy shit, Adrian, is this real life? (laughs) You know, like, but I have to say this experience it changed me like, and mostly for the better. Number one, like my faith in humanity, it's been restored. You know, I'm so used to giving, I'm so used to like doing everything for everyone else. I mean, the love and support that my daughter and I received, it is seriously overwhelming. And I got tons of new friends and family out of this experience. That was amazing. You know, I also have incredible patience now. I am so used to island time. Like I never stress about shit or when it will happen. Like who the fuck cares? Whatever. It'll happen or it fucking won't. And it doesn't matter. You know, like, I don't know. I just have like this careless attitude now. And that's another thing. Like, I don't give a shit about fuck anymore. Like this is good and bad. Like, but especially small stuff, like I can care less anymore. Um, And I truly don't care. Like, but that's kind of bad for some other things. Like there's some things that have happened recently at work this week. And I'm just like, yeah, I just don't care. You know, like everything's going to be okay. Like I don't get as worked up as much as I used to. I guess that's kind of a good thing. Like less stress, better you are. I also have realized like how incredibly strong I am. I went through a lot down there and I came out on top. I didn't let it break me down. And, you know, I'm always going to make lemonade, baby. And lastly, you know, Being stuck down there and stuff, like, it was a really good mental break. I mean, physically, I was far away, but also mentally. I mean, from everything. You know, travel in general helps you realize, like, how small you are in this world, but also your problems, too. And all I went through really changed my perspective on all the shit that was going on in my life before I left. I mean, the the last two years, um, lots of things. And this experience just, like, shifted me away from all of that. You know, I'm focused on myself and my daughter and working hard and taking advantage of all that life has to offer me. You know, right now, that's what I'm craving. More life, more living and more new experiences. And of course, lots of fun and fucking lots of fucking too. (laughs) Speaking of fucking and all these things, um, I want to tell you about a new toy that I got. I named her Goldie because she's a beautiful light shade of gold, (laughs) real original, but she is the Satisfier Pro 2 on adamandeve.com. So remember, so go to adamandeve.com and use the code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S, and you're going to get 50% off of one of most of their entire website, three free gifts, access to six movies, and free shipping. So use that code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S on adamandeve.com and pick yourself up one of these Satisfier Pro 2. That's the one that I got. Adamandeve.com. And it's a clit sucking toy. So it's unlike, so Captain Morgan, you know, he is my absolute favorite. That is definitely a clit sucker. Like it will suck your clit into the toy and it's not going to let go. Oh God, thinking about it. Um, But The Satisfier is a lot like Rosie. It's more of like a pulsating toy for your clip. And again, like lube is a huge tip for this toy. Like I like using a little bit of lube. Like I feel like that makes it go a long way. Um, So what I love about the Satisfier though is the setting. So you turn it on and then it starts, you know, pulsing and then you can turn it up or down. So what I love about it, my favorite thing to do now is like you can get a double orgasm out of it very well. So use the toy, turn it up, you know, you're, it's pulsating. Then you have your first orgasm. And what I love about it is you can turn it down to like the first setting, which is like barely pulsing. So you can leave it there. It's not too much for your sensitive clit. You can leave it there and it's still like, you know, you're still feeling it and you can like watch more porn or do whatever you're doing to turn yourself on. And then like after a little time passes, turn it up again and then have another orgasm. So for me, getting that double orgasm has been the very best with this toy. So check it out. Again, it's on adamandeve.com. Use the code CRAVERS, C-R-A-V-E-R-S. 
Get the 50% off of, you know, most of their toys on their entire website, three free gifts, access to six movies, and free shipping. So I highly recommend it. Try it out. Let me know what you think. And if you achieve that double orgasm, in fact, I just did an hour ago before I started recording, um, it's the fucking best. So let me know what you think about it. And, you know, tr- get, treat your partner with this. Like, I love the men who reach out to me and they're like, Adrian, what toy should I get for my wife or my spouse? And I love that. So that's a great toy. And then talk to her about like this double orgasm because it is fucking amazing. All right. So it's been a while and many of you have lots of questions. So rapid fire. Here we go. I'll answer a few of them. So the first one, so many questions about my local. The biggest one is, how did you meet the local? Um, We met on Instagram. You know, he slid into my DM and the rest is history. So you guys know, like it goes down in the DM, like pop in there. You never know what's going to happen. Number two, I get this question. This is probably my most popular question. Are you on OnlyFans? So I'm not on OnlyFans. I have heavily debated it though. And Honestly, it's, it's, it's not that I'm against it, but it's like, it takes the time. It's the timing. So I have a full-time job, the show, daughter, blah, blah, blah. We're all fucking busy, but you know, I don't know if I can post as much as people want to pay to subscribe for. And that's what stops me. But I've also been thinking about starting an OnlyFans to teach people how to use sex toys. I might do like a series on my Instagram, but so many women, so many, so many people have questions about how to use sex toys. And I really love sex toys. I'm passionate about using them. And I would like to give like a how to not on me, but maybe even just talking about it. I don't know. I have to work that in, but then I'm like, should I do it on OnlyFans? I don't know. It's a lot to think about, but as of right now, no, I am not on OnlyFans. I don't have any plans to start it. If I do, you guys will definitely know. All right, number three, how does a guy get it on with a woman who isn't into it? So I get a ton of questions, and this one I want to answer because I just want to say, like, don't force something. If they're not into you, they're just not that into you. There's nothing you do about it. It's okay. It's not a reflection on you. Just move on. So if someone isn't into you or doesn't want to do something with you, let it go, you know, like don't waste your time and also make sure your partner or something that, that you want them to do. Cause another question was, you know, how can you get your partner to do something you don't, that they don't want to do? Um, you can't like everyone has to have consent and that's a big thing and a very important thing. So if you're unable to attain that with them, um, you have to let it go. I'm, I'm never forcing anything or anything like that. So I would say, let that person go move on. This question made me laugh because like, don't ask me about ages right now. But someone said, someone asked, I'm 53. Should I search for someone younger or older? And I think, you know, I wouldn't even worry about age at this point. I mean, as long as they're legal, right? Like, I don't know, like I'm fucking a 26 year old. So, um, I don't know. I guess it just depends on the person. I wouldn't ever use age to judge someone. Um, the oldest person I've ever fucked is 52 and the youngest is 26. So, It's a, you know, I don't know. It depends on the person. I would never let age dictate, you know, how I'm into them. Unless again, they're underage, my God. But, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. I would say just get yourself out there and fall for somebody that you really care and like, not worry about how old they are. Okay. So my next question is, um, in your opinion, do women want sex as much as men? Uh, I don't think so. I think that men probably, and we all know this, that's an easy question, right? Um, I will tell you, though, I feel like a lot of women want sex a lot more than like they let it on to be. I think people shame women for wanting sex or being, you know, sexually active with a lot of people. I mean, it's definitely like a shameful thing for women still. It's gotten better. It has. But um, I don't know. I think that it's just finding the right person that's on your level. Um, But I would say in general, men probably want sex more than women. I don't know. That's that's a tough question. I I don't want to generalize or answer for anybody else. I know me. Most times, I want sex more than the man does in my life. Um, that's always been a problem for me. So for me, um, the answer I would say, I women, me, I want sex more than a guy. But it just depends on person to person. I don't want to answer for general. I think people know that as a a thing, though. I mean, that's why sex is so much easier for women. I mean, it just is. Okay. So my next question, I get a lot. How do I get started with watching porn? Um, By the way, I love when people reach out to me and they ask me, you know, questions like that because I'm happy to answer them. And I feel like I've helped a lot of women get comfortable with, you know, toys and watching porn or whatever. And I will say, you know, just 
get started. Like, don't be intimidated by it. You know, you can go to youporn.com and just start scrolling videos. They already populate them for you there. And then you'll get to know things that you like. So me personally, I love watching. It's hardcore, passionate sex. I like watching that. And I also like watching guys jerk off. So I just search for that and then watch them. Um, Usually two or three videos, I'm good to go. So (laughs) to get started watching porn, just get started. Like, that's the tip. (laughs) And then uh, this last question kind of threw me for a loop. Okay. So do you suggest lube for blowjobs? Um, definitely not. So spit is like the best thing in the world when it comes to lube, if you ask me, especially for a blowjob. So here's the deal. Like when I'm sucking dick, I will purposely, you know, as I'm getting worked into it, like choke myself a little bit with it and I'll shove it down my throat a lot more. Cause that like produces a lot of saliva and makes it into that like messy blow job that I love so much. Um, so do that. Like, so a lot of women I think are intimidated of like putting the dick deeper down their throat and that's what really gets things going and makes it a much better blow job. So there's your lube. Like it's natural. Like I would never put lube on a dick and then start sucking it. Like that sounds terrible to me. Um, so put it down your throat a little bit more and naturally it'll be wetter And you won't need to worry about lubrication. That's for sure. All right. So let's wrap up this. However long this has been orgasm. I think I'm looking at like 38 minutes. First, I have a huge change coming to my show. So I am going to be moving. New episodes are going to be released on every other Tuesday. So my next episode is going to be released Tuesday, September 21st. You know, it just goes well with my Just the Tip Tuesday segment that I do on TikTok. And I've also noticed that most of my listeners, they're listening on Tuesdays. So it just makes sense. And yes, like I'm totally fucking compelled to say, see you next Tuesday. Um, You know, this season, I'm going to have many new guests, including swingers. Uh, a divorce lawyer. I'm hoping to get a gynecologist on here. And then also I'm trying to get Dr. Zimmerman, AKA the dick doc on TikTok. Also Nathan Spencer of let's shag podcast. I mean, his pussy eating techniques, they're gold. And I think he would provide a lot of good shit on the show. And of course my gang is back from last season and I'm super excited to share that uncle Mo is coming back for my next episode, episode 20 Wow, like 20 episodes, fucking crazy. But lots of good shit coming up. And damn, it feels so good to be back. So get ready, Cravers. Okay, God, I just, I gotta say it. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>